Good morning! Hi cubies and newbies, I am Sunshine. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, and <laughs> today's Tuesday and I'm here to answer any questions about my method for solving Rubik's Cube. It's the newest method, uh, unless there's something that's come out since 2020. Uh, and it is the simplest method that I'm aware of for solving every size Rubik's Cube, meaning that when you learn this method, uh, you don't have to learn more things for the next step up. If, you, if you've learned the 3x3, three three, you don't have to learn more things for the f to make the 4x4 four four look like a 3x3 three three and then solve it, double solve it. Um, no reduction, no, no parodies, just formula A to bring a color to the top, formula B to move three pieces around, and that's all you ever need to do. And so the cube itself dictates what your columns are to, to, for, to solve the cube. So there you go. <laughs> One minute overview of uh, why the AP cube method is perfect. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. Um, yeah, I am Sunshine, and today's Tuesday. Yes, so yesterday I did the corners. I did the corners on all of these cubes, which meant the two by two is solved, and everything else has the uh, the corners are ready to dictate what color that face should be. We used to work around the three the around the center back when the three by three was young in the early '80s. And we never got away from that because people just kept teaching more people the way that they learned and teaching more people the way that they learned and teaching more people. And so we never got ahead. Um, with the five by, th with the, when, with the, uh, if you don't have, if you have a void cube or if you have an even number cube, anything larger than a three, and you don't, you don't know what the center is unless you've practiced it and you know it intuitively. So for, this is geared for newbies. Uh, and so it, when they pick up a cube, they don't know that red is opposite orange, usually. And it hasn't always been. <laughs> um, so corners first, and then I do the edges because the, the corners help, the corners dictate where the edges go. For, so the yellow and green, th this one is not scrambled properly. I, ha I haven't done this one. So, um, so the corners are all correct to each other here. The corners are all correct to each other here. This one is a is a, a parody that I set up, so I have to fix that one. Um, parodies. Parodies are lies. The cake is a lie. The parody is a lie. There is no such thing as a parody. Um, if you have what looks like a parody, a parody is something that can happen on a, on a four by four that could not was not possible on a three by three. And the reason, the fact is, is that absolutely was po was possible on a three by three if you assembled it wrong. If you if you did not have the center lined up, uh, it was impossible to not know that you didn't have the center lined up. But if you solved it with the center unaligned, uh, you came up with a parody. And it's like, wait, it says there's only the two possible, there's many possible solutions, and I have this one. What do I do? Well, here's an example of a parody. Um, this blue wants to be where this green is, and this green wants to be where this blue is. Um, which, if, I, if the corners were correct, that'd be an impossible situation. But the fact that the corners are not correct allows for that situation to occur. Uh, so simultaneously, if the anyway, so there, that's parity, um, and I can fix this. Uh, I simply go back to chapter one, <laughs> the setting the corners. The first, the white corners are correct to each other, so the first four corners. The second corners are not correct, so I look to see whether the sides match. Either all of them will match, one of them will match, or none of them match. And in this case, none of them match. So it doesn't matter which way I hold it. I do formula B, which is eight moves. Every other move is a horizontal. Every other horizontal is a reverse of the previous one. So let's do formula B. So slide the top up, slide up, slide down, slide down. And formula A to bring the color back to the top. And doing this does not mess up any of the cube that's already solved. So the first two layers that are solved on this cube are going to remain solved. Okay, yellow is on top on all four corners. I like to see one side matches. So it goes facing away from me and I do formula B again. Up, up, down, down. 
I will get back to an overview of what these moves do after I fix this cube. Formula A, bring, slide the top, keep going. Formula A brings my yellow back to the top again. You'll notice the first two layers have not been affected. And now I can now as I lined up the corners the way they're supposed to be, I could I realize that the reason why these two look off is because all four of them are off. So I can place this the formula B moves a piece from the front right, from the front top to the left right, to the left front or the right front. It moves from the top to the side. So this piece wants to go here. I'll lower this down so that it's in that place. I'll place it using formula B and put it back up again. And so now um, this one wants to go over. This one, this one wants to go in the green area and that will bring this red one up to the front. So that's happy all around to, for placing. And now we've got two pieces that are in the correct place but need to be flipped. If they're adjacent to each other, then formula A. Again, we, we know that formula A moves, formula B, I said A. I lied. <laughs> okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Hi, if you've just joined me, I am sun just joined us. I am Sunshine and I am demonstrating this is I'm the creator of the AB cube method. Most of you look familiar. I think you know what the AB cube method is, but uh, I've just picked up this cube and it has uh, two pieces that need to flip, two edges that need to flip. And so formula B works with the top front and the front side, be it left or right. So I lined those up so that I'm going to place this piece here from using formula B. I'm going to bring that, okay, so that put this piece here and this piece here, so this one went there. I bring, rotate the top twice to line it up again. And now I'm going to place it here using formula B and it is now it flipped these two pieces you can never flip just one piece um, when you've done a uh, reduction method uh, you can if you're treating two edges as one piece you can end up with that flipped but that is two pieces not one so in solving these corners it solved the rest so formula yesterday i did the corners and today i'm going to do the edge do part do these opposite edges Oh, I'm not really good at monologuing, you guys. You should talk to me. <laughs> talk to me. Ask me questions. Tell me about your love life. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so I've been in doing the two corners. I in doing the two sets, the both two sets of four corners, the the eight corners. I've been looking for the white and the yellow. And so I'm going to, since I've trained my eyes to look for white and yellow, I'm going to continue looking for white and yellow. So that means, since again, since pieces move from the center to the side, I'm going to keep my white and yellow um, left and right. White, to hold my cube so that white and yellow are to the left and right. Yellow and white are left and right. Doesn't matter which one is on which side, as long as the yellow and white are left and right. And then I'm looking for pieces in the middle area edge pieces in the middle area because I'm going to place them between the corners and we're ignoring the centers for now so here's one here's a yellow and white but I want it to be on top so I flip the cube yellow and white are still left and right but my yellow is on top bring the corners to match the front that's the only setup you need to do and then formula B moves a piece from one from one place to another piece is done using the top row and two columns. You can top row first up, top row second up, and then down and down. So, um, which are the columns? Well, I don't have to know that because the cube does. So, if this is the cube that I'm working on, and I have my color, on, my yellow or white on top, corners match the front, then all I need to do, all I need to ascertain, and I don't need to decide it, I just have to, have to look at it and see what, what I, I, it's not a choice I make, I just have to determine it. So it's going in the yellow direction, and yellow is this way, not this way. 
because the blue and yellow is going to go between the blue and yellow, so it's going this direction. So the two columns that you always use for formula B are where it's going to end up and where it began. So this is column one, this is column two, and of course the horizontal is the top row. So to place this piece where it wants to be, I move the top away from the action so it doesn't get tied up in the action. I move this space up, this column up, move, rotate the top again, and then this is my second up. So where it lands, where it begins. And then reverse and do down and down. And so that's placed. I didn't need to know where it was going to place. I just throw it in the direction it wants to be. So no yellow or white here. There's a white. Uh, it's in front and I want it to be on top. So I flip the cube. Yellow and white are still left and right. Bring the corners to match the front. And formula B. Top row and which way is it going? It's, this is yellow and this is white so it's going this way. So I start by moving away. First up, back, second up, reverse down, reverse down. This is placed, and here's another piece I can work on. And we're going to keep doing this for as long as there's a yellow or white somewhere in the middle when I hold my cube, yellow and white, left and right. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing that for as long as there's a white or a yellow in the middle, I just keep doing that. You notice I'm not looking for, hmm, where is my other, where is my other yellow blue? Here's one yellow blue, where's my other one? Let's put them together and then place them. That's just doing the something twice, it's doing two somethings instead of just one. So if I just take this cube, yellow and white are left and right, corners match the front, it's going in this direction, so I just toss it in this direction. Away up, in, up, away down, in, down, and I'm then I'm not looking for where is this piece, I just find a white or yellow, line it up, and toss it in that direction. So I'm not spending, in, I'm not using inspection time, I don't have to inspect what it looks like, I just have to pick a cube that's wrong and throw it in its direction. That's what I do for the edges as well. I just uh, find a cube that's wrong, throw it in its direction, find a cube that's wrong, throw it in its direction. Here's a yellow, line up the corners to match the front, it's going in this direction, up, up, down down. And so there's not a lot of thinking, <laughs> not a lot of brain power you need. You just find a piece that's wrong, bring the corners to match the front, and throw it in its direction. Up, up, down, down. Here's a red and a white. Yellow and white are left and right. We want the yellow and white on top. Corners to match the front throw it in that direction. Okay. And when as long when there's no more yellow or white in my no yellow or white edges in my center area, my middle area. Centers have a meaning, so I'll tell my middle area. So um, when these when there's no more yellow or white, I look to see if they're correct. Uh, they either will be or won't be, and if they're not, then it's because something is, in, is placed incorrectly. Like for example, let's pretend that everything is placed except for. Okay, I look this look at the sides, and this one is incorrect. It's a yellow or white, so I didn't see it from the middle, but it needs to be displaced. So, okay, so um, again, the. I may have a, have, a, have a incorrect piece here, and so I do formula B again. Up, this, this shows me what my first column is, because that's the cube is displacing, and so that moved this piece out into the middle where I can work on it. So get rid, so, so place every wheel or what you see, and then look to see if they're all placed correctly and keep going. So here's, I'm gonna treat this, this I'm gonna treat this as one since they happen to be together, uh, and if that causes problems, I can break them apart later. So up, up, down, down. Those are placed. No yellow or white there. There's a white. And I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm just going to keep doing this. <sighs> Bringing the corners to match the front. Up, up, down down. Everything else for the rest of the cube is formula B.
yellow and white are left and right. Line up the corners to match the front. Determine its direction and send it there. Begin by moving away. That's placed. There's that. Line up the middles. It's going in the yellow direction. Up, up, down, down. No yellow or white. There's a yellow. There will always be, if there's any cube that's out of place, there will always be three or more pieces out of place because that's how the cube works. Um, <clears throat> again, if you have, if you have a, an inner piece that's off, like the center layer that's off, um, then it will look like there's two pieces. If you ever see two pieces, if it looks like it's two pieces out of place, there's always three. If you only see two, the piece you don't see is literally the piece you don't see. It's the, it's the slice that that cube, that, that problem exists on. Uh, and so we take away, we turn that slice one quarter turn and the parity dissolves, disappears. So you don't have to learn algorithms, you don't, and if you, when you work from the outside in, when a parity shows up, you dismiss it right away, so it does, you don't have to remember a parity algorithm or figure out what's going on later on. So, yellow or white, yellow or white, yellow or white, yellow or white, all my yellow or white edges are no longer in the middle area. So I looked and see, are they correctly placed? Yes, the whites are, and the yellows are. Okay, so that is, that's Monday, Monday's the corners, Tuesday is the opposite edges. Um, do, I will continue doing this one. Um, and then, <laughs> lost, a, lost someone. <laughs> I appreciate you spending your morning with me. I think I love it. Okay, so yellow and white are left and right. Find a piece in the middle somewhere that's yellow or white. Oh, um, here's another example. Here's where here is where uh, formula A comes in again. The only other use of formula A. Um, my white my white my center piece my absolute center piece that is is uh, shaped like a jack and does not move. Uh, this center piece is not position correctly. So I want to get my white up there. Um, and when, when all you have is the corners, you can just position it there, just muscle it into place. But if you already have your edges done and you, or, or you don't want to mess it up because someone picked up your cube and just did boxes on it and you're like, ah, okay. So I need, I don't want to move my white to the top. So I find it. I want to throw it in the, towards the top direction. Well, it's going to be two, two throws because it's an opposite. So I go, so here, I'm going to move it up here first. So first. This is the piece that I'm affecting. So in moving formula A, this would be my row and this would be my column. So formula A again, I move the piece away. I move the space down. I move the piece into the space and the piece in the space up. Now I'm going to keep following it so that it goes up here. So away, down, or out, down, in, up. And that's how you can, you can, ooh, hello, sorry for moving my camera. You can do that for every, uh, every piece that wants to come to the front. You can do that for any piece, formula A, but only for the first layer because formula A does affect the other pieces on your cube. And I've, I boast that formula A, that this method doesn't mess up something you've already done. Except for parity in when, in when you've worked from the inside out. Uh, parity doesn't doesn't display parity, parity. The one column slice for for undoing a parity will displace your centers uh, slightly. And so if you've already done your centers first, you are going to have to reset them. But you don't have to memorize a big old long formula. You can memorize a big old long formula, and it's <laughs> probably faster <laughs> and fewer moves. But uh, the the wonderful thing about this method is that this is all you need to learn. Just A and B, that's all you need to learn. You don't have to, you know, if your friends come to you and say, I don't want to spend months learning like you did, just show me the practice, just tell me the secret. I'm sure there's a secret. Um, algorithms are not the secret, algorithms are uh, the, 
cube equivalent of a cheat code. You know, it's like, oh, when I'm in this situation, I do this and things get better. So um, this actually, so this one's done. Yellow and white are left and right. I've lined up my center before I start. If I don't, though, I can do that later. It doesn't matter. So I'm looking for, in the middle area, something that is yellow or white. I find it. I line the corners up. I determine which direction it's going. It's does my white and yellow, white and red does not you want to be placed between my yellow and red. It wants to be placed between my white and red. So it's going in this direction. So top row, two columns. Two columns. I don't have to know what the two columns are. The cube tells me. The two the second column is where my cube is the column where that holds my cube right now, and the first column is where I want it to be. So it's going this direction. So top row first column, second column, away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down, and it landed itself the only place it could land, and gave me another piece in the middle to work on. So yellow and white are left and right, bring the corners to match the front, determine its direction, and away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Someone said this was boring and it's it is. It's boring. It's boring because it's simple and redundant. You don't have to memorize a lot. Um, if you are neurotypical in the in the in the way that you need to have something new and exciting all the time, then this method is not for you. But if you're neurotypical the way my mind is, uh, Doing the same thing, this the, doing the same thing over and over again is very calming and relaxing to me. It's uh, almost meditative. I pick up a cube in whatever shape it is, and then I can just turn my brain off and just do my predictive, the redundant behaviors over and over again, and the cube solves itself. So. Um, again, this is not a speed solving method. This is not a fewest cubes method, but I can take a brand new person, a, a non-cuber who wants to learn and teach them the five by five or this or anything larger uh, in about total, total teach time is about an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, I usually do it in two one hour sessions. And the first met, first hour is just doing the corners because that introduces you, that gets you really, really comfortable and confident with your formula A and formula B. Uh, and then once I've done that, then the next step is just to say, okay, uh, you, you use the top row and the outside columns. But if you let the cube, find a cube that's wrong, and then the cube will tell you which columns to use. If you use different columns, an outside and inside column will move the edges, two inner columns will move centers, the cube, you don't have to remember what it does, you just have to follow the cube that you're work working with. So it's going this direction, I move it away, first up, back, there's my cube, I can't forget it, second up, down, down. My landlady, who saw my cubes, <laughs> and said, oh, you like to do the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> I said, would you like to do the Rubik's Cube? She says, oh, I, I would love to, but I can't learn. I, I have a head injury and memory problems, a brain injury. I can't, I, I cannot learn new things. Um, very, and so I printed out this for on a single piece of paper and I spent about half an hour showing her how Formula A works and how Formula B works to do the corners. And um, then the next day, I showed her again and how it works on the other cubes as well. And she's like, I understand this. I understand this. And she, inside of two days, uh, she was, she would, would ha I, I, I loaned her my six by six. And she would have, she had the cube with her constantly, and she had my piece of paper that I'd written the things out on. And she would solve it, and then scramble it, and then solve it, and then scramble it. She wouldn't let go. She just, for, for about a couple of days. So inside of a week, she said, okay. <laughs> she brought the paper back to me, and she said, 
I'm going to put this in my scrapbooking. Will you autograph it for me? <laughs> so instead of instead of throwing it away when she was done, she, she had me autograph it and she put it in her scrapbook. So, but then she was teaching her brother and her sister and, and uh, everyone else who wanted to learn. <laughs> Which, when I first when I first started teaching these people, teaching my friends, um, I would say, I will teach you, but you can't teach others until I'm actually published because I don't want I, I want to be get credit for this. So you can't teach people until I've got it out into the world, and I will tell you when that happens. So they said, okay, um, and so one of my friends, he said. I, he, he said, uh, I, I'm teaching people how to do the cube. And I'm like, you're not teaching them my method. He says, no, I learned with your method. And then I learned other methods for faster. Uh, and I, those I'm, I'm teaching them the other methods. I'm not, I won't teach them your method until you say it's okay. And so then in 2020, I got it in, onto, in, a, in a copyrightable form, in a substantial form, uh, concrete that, uh, that, and I put it on, on, Wic on Wix abcube.how takes you to Wix where my formula is. I listed it, posted about it on speedsolving.com and so I said, okay, <laughs> you can teach people my method now but you have to tell them where to go to find it so I can get credit for for the solve, not just, hey, I found a solve, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, <I was> so <laughs> cubists are really, I have found in generally, are really, really good at giving credit where credit is due. Um, and helping each other out, except for, um, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm sh I, I searched and I searched and I'm like, this has to be, yeah, I, I'm like, this is so simple. Someone ha must have done it before me. And I kept looking and looking and every time I would see one of those spam posts about you can solve the cube in just two, two, two steps. And I would think, oh no, someone, someone beat me to the punch. And I would go look at it, and it was always one of those fake things. And so I'm like, ah, oh, whew. <laughs> and uh, so once I got it up there uh, and out, you know, listed in the public as with my name on it, then I was I'm like, okay, you can teach people now. <laughs> so yellow and white are left and right. Bring that corner to the top. Line up your corners to match the front. Determine its direction and move it away. First up, back, second up, away. First down, back, second down. And it works on every size cube, you guys. Everyone has done the same. You don't have to remember which algorithm moves which pieces in which direction and which order to use them because this one will mess up other things. Nothing gets messed up. Um, this corner, corners are matched to the front, it's going in this direction, away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. And as I said, you can do formula A if you want to um, for the centers. Um, for example, if I want these pieces to go up here, I can move them back to formula A, which you can only do for one si one face because it's going to mess up the others. But But as an example, I can move this piece away, move the space down, move the piece and the space in, and both of them up. So you can do that if you want to. Again, away, down, in, up. So keep going. Here's a, here's a white or yellow, yellow or white. Where's my sticky? Okay corners bring the corner keep your corners together if your corners are stable then you can't mess up very easily you got to work really hard to mess up by the way look at behind me look at behind me I got a throw rug oops wrong way I got a throw rug throw blanket <laughs> with my logo on it <laughs> it's a it's a melting cube it's a melting cube solved cube that melts down into it's a solved cube that melts into a puddle but then it's got a b cube at the bottom I was really happy when I got that so yellow or white and left and right and 
and co my colors on top so I bring my, the corners match the front it's going in the white direction so I move it away up in up away down in down and again if yellow red and a formulas a and b are all you need to learn to put to solve any size Rubik's cube now if you love your if you love your algorithms that's just fine as well but if you've got a, a new cube this will when you're learning your algorithms it's nice if you can see the algorithms from us if you can do that from a solved position to begin with uh, because that way you can see what it does so this will let you reset your cube to solved and then you can do your algorithm on it to see what it does so that you can figure out when it's when to use it for your speed cubing also this increases the either your intuitive understanding of how the cube is working because you can see what each step is doing and you can understand it what it's doing so yellow and whites are all gone from the middle so I'd like to see if the sides are done they, they, they might be incorrectly placed so I have to check these are all whites are all correct yellows are all correct if they were not I would take an incorrect piece mark it and put a garbage piece from the set from the middle down into that spot and then that would bring it out here where I can replace it correctly so opposite edges are done corners are done opposite edges are done that's it for Tuesday <laughs> unless I've got unless I've got comments and qu comments queries questions posers denials complaints criticisms <laughs> um, Again, I'm Sunshine, and I created the method, and I'm happy about it, and I'm so grateful you guys are spending your time with me. You guys are, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Go have a good day. Be nice to yourself and each other. Bye.